What's going on everybody? Kenny here also known as Silent85. Welcome to another vlog. I wanted to talk about something that um, is going on. Something that is happening, something that will affect all of us, especially here in the U.S. Um, there's a divide in the country right now because of a recent Supreme Court decision that a lot of you know what I'm talking about, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's Roe v. Wade. Um, a ruling that over 50 years ago decided and made uh, the country, uh, you know, another place. In my opinion, a better place by, um, you know, putting abortions as legal on the federal level. Now, of course, with them not, not being federal anymore, they've kicked it back to the states, which... I agree with is, is you know uh, still kind of a, a decent thing at least not all abortions have been made illegal but that could still happen if every state said no we're not doing that but that won't happen at least a lot of states are right now are fixing to uh, you know keep them legal uh, but half the states are going to make them illegal um, and that's that's where the divides coming from now my personal opinion on the matter I don't usually get political here on this, but I believe that while politics is a part of it, it's also a very important point, a very important point to note that um, as a guy, as a brother, as a son, uh, as a boyfriend, um, as an uncle, I believe that women should have access to the specialty health care that they need. Now, I, I, I as a guy, I have different health care needs um, in, in some form than, than women. Women, much like us guys in some ways, have specialty health care that is needed. And part of their health care, part of their health, is having babies. It's part of their genetic makeup. It's part of their physical build. It's, part of, it's what they're capable of biologically. We as men we don't go through that. We contribute, obviously, we can contribute in ways. But women have different health care needs, and babies are a part of that. Now, wherever you want to argue where life begins or whatever, that's fine. I'm not going there. What I'm trying to point out is that women have different health care needs. And sometimes during pregnancy, it, especially depending on how the pregnancy came about, whether rape, incest, or maybe even both in some cases, um, or let's just say a mother's a you know a cancer patient and she's currently become pregnant, but um, if she proceeds in term, then having the baby puts her life in danger because of the cancer or because of the treatment or the cancer treatment, um, she has to abort because of the cancer treatment. Now that's obviously going to be tough on the mother, but that's her choice. That is her choice. Where it, what it comes down to is, does she have safe access to be able to do what needs to be done? Or are we potentially looking at back alley deals, which was a big thing back in the past when illegals, when abortions was, were illegal um, and it endangered lives. You, this is back in the day when I say back alley deals, I'm talking about unsafe, unhealthy, unlicensed professionals doing these routines. Nowadays, abortions can actually come down to a pill, a couple of pills, from my understanding. But the main point is, women have different health needs. What figures into those health needs is um, pregnancies, and again, where life begins, that's, there is scientific data supporting certain facts. Some people don't believe it. Others argue another point. That's fine, whatever. But what it comes down to, and on my point on this, is women's health care. Women's health care. And sometimes, a lot of the time, even, abortions or terminations has to be considered because it is a part of the woman's overall health. It's also a part of the potential child health at a certain point during the pregnancy. 
now again the the emotion behind all this the divide that comes about when you think about this whether right? you look at it from a religious dogmatic standpoint or from a scientific standpoint which is the way I look at it um, personally as a boyfriend and as a father if it was to come down to me the way I see it if I was to be put in the position of if I had a girlfriend or if I had a wife come at me and say what what do you think about this we have a baby I'm in a certain position that something needs to be done but I don't know how to feel about it I'm gonna look at my girlfriend or my wife and tell them you're what's important to me right now you are most important I will support anything you want to do but depending on the circumstances of what the context is we will have other chances to have other children rather we can adopt rather we can um, do embryonic pregnancy whatever it may be but if aborting provides better safe chances for the mother to survive then that is what it is but it's up to her it's not up to me I, I can have input I'm, I'm, I'm obviously the father but it's up to her it's her right it is her right now, obviously, I, I, I love that she came to me and regarded me in this decision. I love that um, because obviously it's uh, on both of us for this pregnancy coming about. <laughs> we both had a hand in it, you know, so to speak. And um, that, is, that is important. But in the end, in the end, it is her right and it is her health, it is her body, it is her choice. Now, depending on how far along the pregnancy is, if it comes to... Um, full formation and a nervous system comes about to where it can feel pain, where it can feel with some emotion. Obviously, that is a heavy. Obviously, that is a heavy thing. But my girlfriend or my wife's health is going to come first. It, it is obviously very heavy, very detrimental that it is a child that may need to not come into this world and see it as it is. But unfortunately, that small developing life, if it reaches that stage, um, there's a choice that has to be made. And in the choice, the, the mother is really going to come into play. And as a son, if there was a chance that I had to give a body part or donate something to my mom biologically to help her survive, I'm okay with doing that. Of course, it's obviously a question of do I sacrifice my life for my mother? Now, as she gets older and I'm younger, she obviously doesn't want that. She, she, she's reaching her um, in life at some point and uh, I still have a bunch of years to live. But I'm also a fully developed human being of 38 years. <sighs> Somebody in the womb or a fetus in the womb, or an embryo in the womb, depending on the stage, is obviously it's going to be heavier the, the longer it goes. But depending on the circumstances, 90% of the time, I'm going to want my girlfriend and my wife around to potentially have more children with, and to have and spend the rest of my life with. Um, but that, But that's on me. That is on me. A lot of people will look at me and judge me for that. A lot of people look at me and say, well, you don't care about your kids. You don't care about your potential kids. That's not exactly fair because I also care and love for my girlfriend or my wife. And depending on the development stage of whatever is in her womb, her womb, not mine, hers, not mine, her womb, it's her choice. <laughs> I will live with whatever decision is made. But in my opinion, it's her. It is her. Now, let's say it's further in development. Eight months, nearly full term, nearly full pregnancy, about to come out. But there's a complication. The child can live, but it may mean her life. That's where I'm not so sure, because again, it's going to be up to her. I don't want to lose either. I don't want to lose either one of them. And, that, and that's where these 
gray details come in. It's not which way or the other. It's not, you know, no abortions or have abortions. It, there's context in the details. Let's just, it's not so black and white as people want it to be. It is not so black and white. There are details that come into play that have to be considered. And that's why, in my opinion, keeping abortions legal at a federal level and then deciding on a case-by-case -case basis if it can be done is really what matters. But women having access to these procedures that need to be done, rather they've got to, if somebody's pregnant, number one, if somebody's pregnant, how are they going to, how, how is it, how is a woman, let's say she's raped and she, she's, you know, probably six, eight, eight weeks along, depending on her body weight, that's hard to tell too, by the way, um, as well as other factors. How, if she is pregnant, how is she going to get to another state to have a procedure done safely? You know, I mean, in some ways she can't fly. If she was to fly, there's a chance she loses the baby anyway. So there, there, listen, this stuff gets crazy. And we are all up in arms about it because these are rights. These are women's, 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 women's rights. And we, the majority of men, are making these decisions for these mothers, for these women, for these rape victims, for these incest victims, for these, for these women. And there are things that need to be considered. I've given my opinion. I think I've talked about this long enough. I probably left a few things out, but in the end, it's her decision. And I, I say that even as a boyfriend and even, even as an ex-husband. It, it, all, it all comes down to them. It's not our role as men to decide what is best for a woman because they have certain needs and they need certain health care. And sometimes... Sometimes judgment can be made by, by a father or by a husband, legally. But that doesn't seem right to me, especially if it's concerning a major health concern, because it's on the woman. The, the only way a man should be deciding is that if, if the woman is comatose or if the woman is not mentally fit to be able to make that decision. But even then, even then, it's still a gray area. So anyway, I know I'll get some dislikes on this video, so be it. There is a lot of going on in America right now. There's a lot of rights being taken away at the federal level, um, which I believe they should remain. But that's just me. That's just one man's opinion. There's also talk of other rights being questioned and thrown out at the legal level, at the federal level. In ways, it feels like we're going backwards. This, this fight is not entirely over. But what I will say is that when you are making these decisions, when you are thinking about this critically and you're thinking about it personally, try not to let religious dogma come into it. Try not to let any ideologies come into it. Look at the facts. Look at what may or may not need to be done depending on the situation. Don't look at it as a black and white issue. It is not black and white. It is not black and white. As many times as we want to do that, it is not black and white. These issues are critical. These issues vary. These issues depend on the details. And I, I believe it's in these conditions for the person to have access to legitimate medical practices, legitimate medical equipment, legitimate medical professionals to be able to have what needs to be done, done. Personal beliefs, religious dogma, anything to that degree should not, should not in any way be brought into this discussion. It should not be brought into this discussion, in my opinion. I've said what I need to say on the matter. I may lose some subscribers for posting this. But look, this is this is going to affect everybody. You're going to see protesters out. Um, we saw one the other day. And in many states across the country, especially the ones being affected by this, women are fighting for their rights to be able to work with their own body. 
to be able to have rights to their own body. And women deserve equally across the board the kind of health care that we as men get, no matter what that may mean. We should not, they should not be denied access to anything, anything. But that's just one man's opinion. Stay safe, stay sane. Remember, you're awesome. Never let the world tell lies. And again, to note, if I lose some subscribers, if I get some dislikes on this video, one of the very few political videos that I ever post, I totally understand. But just remember, you're a human being. All of us are human beings. And every human being has their needs.